go ahead and build this this app and by app I mean it's really a system that has both hardware uh, that is the Arduino in the circuit and then the software that we're going to create. Start out I have the Arduino here it's connected to the USB port on my laptop. Um, one thing to notice is that the cable here is not, is not is perhaps one that you're not used to seeing that is a USB but it's the square uh, connector here. Um, there's a little light that glows on there. That's just a power on light on the Arduino um, Uno board that just tells you that it has power. Okay, so we're going to go and fire up the Arduino IDE on my Mac. I've got that as an icon in the dock, so I just click on it and it'll open up. So I was previously working on another uh, script and um, for another uh, course. Um, and so the IDE opened up into that. So what I'm going to do is uh, create a new one. I'm going to click on new and that'll open up a new sketch and I'll just close this one so we don't need it. So what we're going to do is build a sketch that will simply uh, cause an LED to blink. And going over here, I'm going to connect the LED to pin 11. And, you know, I can connect it to any one of these pins for the most part. Um, now, normally, you know, when you're connecting an LED, uh, you need a resistor to limit the current. If you take your LED and connect it directly to a battery, you'll burn it out. The Arduino pins are only capable of providing a maximum of 40 milliamps of current. So it's not going to burn out an LED. It can shorten its lifetime, but it's not going to burn it out. So kind of a quick and easy way of connecting this would be that long pin there. The anode goes into pin 11, and then the cathode goes into ground. So this is, the, this is kind of the simplest circuit that you can make. So there I have the LED uh, connected to the Arduino. And normally you'll be building more complicated circuits and you'll use a breadboard. Okay, so we just want code that's going to cause an LED to blink. Uh, so the very first thing I'm going to do here is, um, well, I want to give this a name. Um, I'm going to save this code that we're going to build and I'm going to call it um, I'll call it blink blinker one now choosing the name of your code sort of like choosing the names of variables and choosing what kind of comments to put into your code is actually quite a big deal because uh, in a little while, whether it's a couple days or a week or, or six months or a year, you may look back at the code and you're going to wonder, what does this do? And, and hopefully you've chosen a good name for it. If you look at some of the uh, other files that I have in here, I've got Blink Fast, Blinking LED, Blink LED, Blink LED 2, Blink LED 3, External Blink. I mean, obviously these are not very descriptive. I know that they have something to do with a blinking LED, all those different files. But if I were looking for a particular one, I'd have to sort of go hunting through there to find out which one I want. Okay, for now, we're just going to call this Blinker1. I'm going to save it. Um, I'm going to create a, a, what's called a block comment up here. And I'm just going to note that this is Blinker1.ino. Um, these uh, scripts get saved with the extension .ino. And uh, okay, so we're going to start out, and I'm going to do this very simply. All I'm going to do is I'm going to use pin 11, and I'm going to write this code actually several times. I'm going, to, I'm going to write it once, check it out, upload it to the Arduino, and then I'll revise it and make it a little better. So the pins on the Arduino, these various pins, can be used as inputs or outputs. Input meaning you're, you're looking to see whether you have a 5-volt or a 0-volt signal on there, and they could be used for reading switches and other things or their output pins, and you're asserting 5 volts or 0 volts to turn an LED or something else on. So the first one thing we have to do is, is use the command pin mode, and we're talking about pin 11 here, output. Okay, so we're just, we've just made pin 11 an output. Uh, now down here, I'm going to turn on that LED. So I'm going to do D-I-G-I-T-A digital write. 11 high. That will turn on the LED and then digital write 11 low. That'll turn it off because when you write a high that's going to cause pin 11 to take on a value 5 volts. That'll cause the LED to glow. Low will turn the LED off. Now if I were to, well, let's just talk a bit about 
about how this code works, setup runs once. Every Arduino script has these two functions, setup and loop. Setup will run once, as soon as you power up or as soon as you reset the device. And then after, after setup is run, the function called loop will just run continuously. So what would happen is we would do digital write high, digital write low, digital write high, digital write low, and that would happen very, very fast. And so you would actually not even be able to see the thing blinking because it would be happening much faster than your eyes can discern. So what I'm going to do is put a delay in here. And I'll start out with a delay of uh, 1,000. And that's 1,000 milliseconds. So that's one second. Okay, delay 1,000. Okay, so I'm about ready to test this code. That's, that's the code. It's complete. I'm about ready to check it out. And um, what I have to do is first verify that the code is going to work. And so what I'm going to do is just deliberately omit, omit this semicolon here. I'll, if I leave that off and I go to verify, what will happen is I'll get an error. It tells me that it was expecting a semicolon before that closed brace. And so it kind of points me in the direction of the error. error. Okay. So it compiled. That is... It doesn't have any errors in the code. So now I'm going to press this button and I'm going to upload it. And if everything works, we should see that LED blinking on and off. Okay, on, off, on, off. Okay, so now let's just uh, change it a little bit. It's blinking on and off at a rate of, of uh, one second on, one second off. If I go back and I modify these, I'll make that 100. So now that's... Um, on for a tenth of a second, off for a tenth of a second, and I'll verify. Upload. Okay, and you see it's blinking uh, faster. Um, okay, so this code works. We're blinking an LED. Uh, now, let's just sort of clean this up a little bit. And by clean it up, I mean we should add more uh, comments to it and a couple other things that we should do to make the code better. You'll notice that when I wanted to change delay, I had to actually change it in two different lines. But what I can do is go up here and I can do this. Define. I'm going to create a, uh, uh, I'm going to use a, 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 what's called a symbolic constant, my delay. And I'll make that 100. And then down here, I'll write my delay. And what that does for us is it defines, it's called a preprocessor directive, but every time the compiler sees my delay, uh, it will replace that with 100. And so what that allows me to do is, when I want to change the uh, delay time, the blink rate, I just change this one line up here, and then that'll automatically uh, get reflected in all those lines of code. Likewise, Sometimes we may find it necessary to change the pin. Let's suppose we want to move the pin over from, a, from uh, 11 to 12, let's say. And let's say we have a good reason for doing that. Okay? I know I see I have to change the pin uh, number in, in three different places. In pin mode, digital write high, and digital write low. So what I'll do is do another define. It's called a symbolic constant. And I'll just call that LED. And we, we moved it over to pin 12. So then down here, pin mode 12, digital right. Oh, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this wrong. I want to write LED. 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 Okay, so that way, if I ever need to change it, I have to just change this line up top. And if I were to verify that, it would work. Okay, we're done compiling. I'll upload it. And it should start blinking again. Okay. Um, okay. Now let's take a look at the at, at the code here. We should do some documenting. First of all, I notice that I have a typo here. I wrote blingler instead of blinker. This comment, uh, this slash star, starts what's called a block comment, and it ends with star slash. You can put anything you want in there, uh, and so that is information that's there for for you for humans. The compiler doesn't care about that. Uh, those those comments don't actually made their way to the machine code on the uh, uh, at Mega microcontroller chip. Um, but it is important to put some code in there that some 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 information in there that 
that tells users what this code is going to do. So let me go ahead and do this. This, this code uh, blinks an LED. Make it really simple. Okay. Now, you'll find that there are many examples of blinking LED code that exist in the, in the public domain. Uh, so I think I might just write something like, uh, there are many codes like this, but this one is mine. Okay, I'm being a little bit sort of humorous there, but I want to put my name on there. And I'll put the date, 11 7, 21. So there's my block comment. And if I look at it, I can say, okay, I can see immediately there's the name of it. There's when I created it. I know that I created it. And, I, and I've got one line describing what it does. Okay, uh, maybe a couple things. Um, we'll just put a, a single line comment here. This is the delay in milliseconds. Okay, and then put the LED here in this pin. Now let me just say a bit about capital and lowercase. In some cases, uh, Arduino does care about capital versus lowercase. If you look at pin mode, for example, it's lowercase p, uppercase m. If I make that uh, lowercase m, so one thing you notice is that the color change, it's all black. One of the things that the, I, the IDE does for us is it uh, checks uh, syntax along the way and it provides color coding, which gives you a quick indication that you might have an error. So when you look at this, you might say, hey, why isn't that orange? Or you'd get a, an error flag when you try to compile it. And that's because there's a, this is case sensitive. Okay. When it comes to things like these symbolic constants and, and the, the names of variables, you're free to use upper or lower case. Um, as a convention, when you're defining a symbolic constant like this, when you're using one of these define statements, you tend to use all capital. So it's all capitals for a defined symbolic constant. Okay, maybe you just, um, this is, I'll put a comment here, uh, set the pin as output, and LED on, LED off. Okay, uh, com that compiles. Um, now, you'll find when you first start using this IDE, you're using this row of uh, this 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 menu bar often you tend to, to not use the menu bar up top all that often but there's one I want to show you under tools we can do auto format and you can click that and what it will do is it'll just go and kind of clean this up it'll clean up the spacing the indentation it cleaned up that block code and it just makes it look a little uh, neater okay so there's the code it's about done um, Maybe what I'll do is I'll make this blink Okay, the, it looks like the camera had timed out on us, but maybe I'll just have this blink even more slowly. I'll go down to a, uh, a long two seconds. And let's upload that. On, off, on, off. Okay, so it's not the most thrilling uh, application, but it shows uh, the interplay between the Arduino board and the IDE. Now, what we've done here is we've created code, and I've created it on my Mac, and then the IDE has compiled that. It has really cross-compiled it, meaning it has translated my C code into the machine language of the processor inside that board. So now that code is resident in the flash ROM on that board. So I can take my computer away, okay, take that away, and that code is now resident on that board. And I can power up the board with something like a 9-volt battery, and it'll, it will still run. So you see that is now, that code is embedded there in the processor. Okay, and now let's suppose that I wanted to go back and 
uh, do some more programming with it. Maybe we'll change this code around a little bit. Um, one of the things I want to show you is what would happen if I change the uh, USB port. So right now, this cable is connected here to one of the USB ports on my laptop. Let me suppose I take it and move it over. Okay, you know, because you're often plugging in and unplugging these ports. So let me go back here, reconnect it. Whoa. Okay. And let's suppose that I want to make it blink faster. So I'm going to change this to uh, a, a rather fast uh, 50 milliseconds. Okay, the code compiles, and let me upload it. And you see I have a problem. It says an error occurred while uploading the sketch. Down here it says AVR dude. That's the part of the code um, that attempts to burn the code through USB onto the chip itself. And what happens is it's not able to find the Arduino Uno on the same USB serial port that it had been looking at before. So this is when we go to Tools, and I'm going to go to Port, and what we'll see is that the Arduino is plugged into the, the USB modem port number 14201. And you'll see down here it was plugged into 14101. So it's simply a matter of telling the IDE to look for the Arduino on this port instead. And so once I do that, I can upload. And there's the rapidly flashing LED. Okay, that's it.